Hi, this is my review of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. This version of Dungeons and Dragons always felt to me like a sort of like a threshold or portal that connected uh, the old school versions of Dungeons and Dragons with the newer school school of thought uh, that is the Dungeons and Dragons 3.0, 3.5, etc. Well, let's talk about the quality of the book. The book is pretty sturdy. It's a hardcover book and it has good binding. Mm, despite the many times I've used this book, it only has a few um, scratches and, and scuff marks. But it's uh, a very good book in general. The paper is good, however it feels like it's going to tear apart sometimes. Uh, and it's getting a bit yellowish. So I'll probably get the, the newer, the reprinted, reprint versions. Mm. The illustrations are good. I, I'm going to show you some illustrations as I review things in, in the book. And the organization, well, I think it's decent. There are some parts that are a bit hard to to look for, uh, um, some class-related elements and such, but in general, the, it does a, does a pretty good job um, with the organization. Now, let's talk about the, the contents of the book. First, the book gives you an introduction uh, to what Advanced Dungeons & Dragons is. However, um, it's less than decent, it's not really a good introduction. Well, nowadays it's very easy to, to understand how to play a game. You have uh, all those um, quick starts and, and you can look around in the forums and um, take a look at different web pages and it's very easy to understand how to, how to play a game, even the, the difficult ones, at least compared to back then. Because um, back then y you couldn't really get too much information on how to play AD&D unless you uh, played the introductory box that I reviewed a, a while ago or um, if you asked around maybe a, a player would teach you how to play the game but with this book alone it was going to be a bit difficult to understand the, the game uh, Well, after um, showing you the basics you get right into character creation, which is pretty average, you just roll your stats, you have different methods to, to roll your characters, and then you have to pick a race. Now, there was something that I really didn't like about this version of Dungeons & Dragons when it came to, to character races. The thing is that demi-humans uh, can't reach level 20 at certain classes. You, you will always uh, feel a bit limited or, or constricted and because of that uh, a lot of my players always uh, chose human because they always felt like it was kind of a bummer that they won't reach level 20 at a certain, in a certain class so that that's, uh, wasn't really good I, I even uh, applied a house rule in which everybody could reach level 20 but the humans had the advantage that they started with uh, two points to, to use on their stats, on their abilities and, and that's basically it. The thing is that demi-humans had different uh, powers or well, well, abilities like uh, infravision and um, the ability to uh, multi-class, etc. So uh, the human felt a bit like, I don't know, not, not as, as useful or as flexible as them. So gi giving the human um, a plus two bonus or two points to use on his stats kind of balanced things a bit in that aspect. And then we have the uh, player character classes. Oh, let me show you a few illustrations. The art in this book is kind of kind of a mixed bag. You get some like pretty plain looking illustrations, um, like these ones. They, they don't really look too mm, three dimensional. It's kind of like like too flat. I don't know. And, but you get some awesome ones. I will show you them. Show you a few of them later. Mm. Well, the character classes were basically four groups. You had the warrior group, which had the fighter, the ranger, and the paladin. The wizard, who had the mage and specialist wizard. And you had the priest, which had the cleric and sort of like specialist cleric, the cleric focused on certain domains, and the druid. And you had the rogue group, which had the thief and the bard. Now, these classes weren't exactly balanced between each other. You had a certain requirement, a certain... Um, ability requirement to to qualify for that class so for example you only needed a, a strength of 9 to become a fighter which was like a 
a specialist in using weapons. However, if you wanted to become a paladin or a ranger, you had to, for example, in the case of the, of the paladin, you needed a strength of 12, constitution of 9, wisdom of 13, and charisma of 17. But as a ranger and as a paladin, you had uh, a lot of different powers and, and abilities that the fighter didn't have. But uh, some mm, classes really felt a bit, I don't know, like they were just pretty underwhelming. So, for example, uh, with the specialist wizard, um, the there were some specialists like the um, the diviner and the necromancer who felt really really weak. In the case of the necromancer, and and because necromancers are so cool to to play as in role playing games, it, it really felt disappointing that you couldn't be a decent necromancer in this game. If you wanted to play a necromancer, it was better to to choose a cleric because they could raise undead um, earlier. But if you played as a as a mage necromancer. It, there, it was really hard to survive the first few levels. There aren't that many mm, useful necromancer spells at first. You only had chill touch and that's a pretty crappy spell in my opinion. You had to get close to, to your enemy and you had to touch him. And if you manage to touch your enemy, your enemy still got a saving throw. And maybe you only did like uh, 1 to 4 points of damage and you gave him a minus 1 penalty to attack rolls. So it, w it went al always like this, <laughs> and, and the, your enemy was standing there, and you tried to attack him, and maybe you hurt him a bit, and the enemy was like, ouch, that, that hurt, and he would kill you in the next round. So surviving as a necromancer was pretty hard. You, If you want to play as a necromancer in AD&D, you needed one of the other uh, splat books, such as the necromancer's handbook. So th that was pretty disappointing, and that's another thing that I didn't like about AD&D in general. The authors felt a bit... Mm -mm kind of like, how would you call them, like rigid, like they told you, this is the way the game it is, and, and it, it should be like that, it should work like that. I even I think it was in the Dungeon Master's Guide when they talked about how necromancy was a, a bit weak, and they said, but that's the way it's supposed to be, and no, it's not. <laughs> so, well, at least if you want your game to be fun, it, it, it shouldn't be like that. Well... Then you have a, a chapter on alignment, you know, law and chaos, good and evil. And there was a chapter on proficiencies. Proficiencies weren't uh, really good as a system, in my opinion. The thing is, you could play without them because you just needed to perform uh, a simple skill check for different things. But proficiencies, instead of feeling like you were getting something from them, they felt a bit more like you had to take them or you would get penalties uh, trying out th different things. So if you try to become proficient in, in the use of a certain weapon, you were doing it because if you didn't, uh, if you weren't proficient with that weapon, you would get a penalty. So you didn't feel like you were gaining a cool uh, bon bonus or modifier. You were kind of doing it j just so you won't be penalized. So it, it wasn't really that good. And then you have a chapter with uh, money and equipment. Some very good lists on, on equipment. You had a lot of weapons, and this is a, a crunchy aspect of, of this version of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, versions had, um, uh, sorry, versions. Um, weapons had different um, speeds and, and types, like, uh, you know, piercing, blunt, etc. And the speed would actually uh, modify your initiative. And the, if your weapon was uh, a piercing weapon or a slashing weapon, it will, could also affect the way you damaged your opponent. So. Um, that was a bit crunchy. If you wanted to give more um, depth to the system of combat, you had those elements to to apply as modifiers or, or bonuses or penal penalties. Mm, then you had a chapter uh, telling you a bit more about magic, but when it comes to magic, experience, uh, the NPC chapters and all that in this player's handbook, they didn't really give you that much information. Uh, all of that was um, contained in the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. Hmm. The, now, when it comes to combat, uh, combat is actually quite simple in this game. Mm, it felt a bit like a stop and go motion because first you, you uh, declared your character's actions and then you rolled initiative. But after rolling initiative, you moved and made one of your attacks in case you could attack more than once and then the opponent would react or respond by attacking or, or moving or something else and then you would, you would finish applying your attacks or a spell in case you needed that spell 
mm -hmm. I had a long casting casting time. So it felt kind of like a stop and go, stop and go, like move, attack, wait for reaction, attack. And it felt kind of like that. In a way, it feels a bit more real, but at the same time, it could get a bit clunky. And you had all, diff all the different uh, modifiers for conditions, that if, you, if you're attacking on the higher ground, if you are invisible, etc., etc. Oh, I really like this illustration. However, I think the, the uh, perspective for the arm is a bit off. It kind of feels, looks like the arm is um, coming out from the shoulder, kind of like, like this. <laughs> so it's a bit weird. Hmm. Oh, I was going to show you some illustrations of the player uh, classes. Some of them are quite good in an old school play kind of way. Like this one, this is the fighter. But others, as I was telling you, it, they feel a bit flat, even with uh, shadows, they feel like very bidimensional, I don't know. Look, this is the paladin. So it looks a bit flat, especially the head. Now, more things about combat, well, it's actually uh, too simple that it, some players may actually not like it as much because uh, it, when it comes to old school games, a lot of the charm comes from using your intelligence and your wits to overcome different obstacles, traps, mazes, etc. But uh, for those players that wanted a bit more um, tactics in, in combat and more strategy, uh, most of the time combat was I hit you, you hit me, I hit you, you hit me, sometimes I change position and uh, repeat. So you didn't have options like uh, to try to uh, knock down your opponent, to try to disarm him, etc. Or maybe uh, like an all-out attack. You had some more options in the Dungeon Master's Guide, but if you wanted more more tactical tactics and in combat, you needed the um, the combat and tactics book and the skills and powers. So th that was a bit disappointing as well. You also had a chapter on on treasure and encounters, but as I was telling you. It's uh, those are very short chapters and they have almost no information. Instead of in using those chapters, we should, should have added more uh, combat tactics, in my opinion. Also, more information on time and movement, or on swimming, climbing, or how you can perform perform different skill checks. That's another thing that I think uh, failed a bit with this uh, system at first. The rogue character had all these abilities to climb, move stealthily, etc. But mm, Sometimes players could uh, pull off those tasks just by performing a, a simple skill check, and the rogue wouldn't be uh, wouldn't feel like he was doing something important or, or, or shining among amongst the group. So the, um, the the other book, I think it was uh, Skills and Powers, kind of changed that a bit by saying that that the rogue was the only one allowed to perform different uh, difficult tasks for making, or the rogue rogue was the only one who could. Um, roll uh, two or three times to see if you could accomplish something and that was um i actually played it like that with a house rule because i noticed that the rogue was trying to climb a wall and the fighter was some sometimes being better at it than the rogue because the fighter's higher dexterity and so i said that oh no that um, building is too difficult to climb but only the rogue may attempt it so it was kind of like that and you get a, a decent selection of spells however as i was telling you there are a lot of spells of uh, specific schools who aren't very good. It's really disappointing in the, the lack of mm, cool necromancer spells. Oh look, this is uh, an illustration of someone creating a golem. Uh, the good thing is that the book also contains an index and a glossary and some reference tables at the end. However, it doesn't have a good character sheet, you have to create your own. That's also a bit disappointing. What, well, let me tell you what I think about this book and AD&D in general. I think, well, AD&D is the Dungeons & Dragons system that I played the most in my RPG career. Mm, the system was, uh, was good, but could get a bit clunky. So it felt like a, sort of like a contradiction there were some things that were really simple like combat and some skill checks but then you had proficiencies and, and weapon ski, uh, speeds and other skills and 
you, you didn't really um, you couldn't say like it was a simple game or, or, or that it was completely a hard game it's sort of like a customizable game mm, the, the good thing is that there there is a lot of material for AD&D you, and you can get the, get it as PDFs in, at writerrpg.com and it, mm, most of them are really cheap so it's in a sense it's well supported even nowadays and I really have a lot of uh, fun memories of using the system and oh I forgot to mention that you also have a, a sort of like an unarmed combat uh, table um, to make unarmed attacks and it was really funny because one time I had this player that was a druid and the player uh, was really into boxing so uh, one time the druid was fighting one-on-one -on -one with an ogre and he was hurting, having a pretty hard time and the druid just dropped his weapons and started punching the ogre in an attempt to knock him out and he actually rolled a haymaker and, and rolled the percentage dice and he knocked, knocked the ogre out and it was really funny <laughs> so it has those um, special, um, I don't know, quirky moments uh, because of the different tables and, and modifiers but at the same time it felt lacking in many things in, in the schools of magic that I mentioned in um, the lack of uh, combat maneuvers and tactics but I would actually recommend that you try this version of the game, uh, especially now that there are new uh, reprinted versions of it. And, and you're going to find a lot of material, a lot of campaign settings, Ravenloft and Forgotten Realms being my favorite ones, Planescape was pretty good too. So uh, I, I definitely recommend that you, that you should try it. Well, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.